Hey child and welcome back to my channel show. This is a one month update on the process that I took you all with me on last month and that is my gastric sleeve surgery. If you're new here, first of all, hey child. Secondly, I had weight loss surgery in the form of the gastric sleeve surgery on July 13th. If you don't know what that is, basically honey, they just gone up in there, remove a portion of the stomach, stick you back up and you can't eat as much as you used to. It's basically to jumpstart you on your weight loss process. You still have to be responsible for what you eat, what you drink. You have to be responsible, but you just can't intake as much. So the last time I talked to you all about it on camera was the day I got home from the hospital. So I'm going to start from there, kind of tell you what was going on um, since then, what the process of healing has been like. Um, and then I'm going to answer some questions that I gave you all the opportunity to ask on YouTube. So let's start with me getting home from the hospital. When I got home, they sent me home with what was called a Q pump, which is basically this balloon full of pain medication that was administered directly into my stomach. There was a small wire that actually was inside of me. Um, and when the pump deflated, I had to remove it. When I tell you that was a godsend, like literally since I've been home, even though it was a major surgery, I have not taken pain medication one time. They sent me home with some good stuff. And when I say good, I mean good. And it's still sitting on the counter because I didn't need it. That pain pump took care of everything. The only pain that I have felt physically is a little muscle pain, like right at the big incision by my belly button where they actually removed the stomach. I felt some muscle soreness there. Um, it took about three weeks for that to stop hurting, but it was never hurting enough to the point where I had to take any pain medication. I'm able to drink. Like today, we got home from a road trip. The whole time there, I had a, a 16 ounce bottle of water and then I had a 32 ounce cup as well. I was able to drink those within the five hours that it took to get from Tennessee to Missouri. As far as eating, I eat in very small portions, um, but I eat often. So I'll eat something and then you know your surgeon says in order um, for you to, to really get the nutrients, don't drink anything for 30 minutes. So my process of eating is I eat a little bit until I start hiccuping because that's usually a sign that my body is getting full, right? So then I stop. I wait 30 minutes and then I drink something and then I stop. And then probably an hour or so later, I take a couple more bites. So I'm able to get my protein. I feel good. I'm not starving. Like I, this has been an amazing process. Now let's talk about weight loss. I took some notes on here so I won't be on here rambling. We can, you know, just go and get down to the facts and get on out of here saying, so weight loss, I've lost 30 pounds to date. I will say I have hit what is called the three week stall. And what the three week stall is, is usually you, if you're going through this process, you do the liquid diet before surgery, you do liquids after surgery, and then around three weeks is when you start introducing foods back into your system and your body's adjusting. Sometimes you stop losing weight at that point because your body's still healing, still shifting. So I did do that. I have not lost any weight in about a week or so, but that's completely normal. But yeah, overall I've lost 30 pounds and I can really tell it in my face. When I look at my body, I still see my body as is. But I'm gonna show you a picture right here. So yeah, I've lost 30 pounds. As far as scarring goes, if you look right here, this is the surgery scar and it's actually starting to fade. But to me, that's not really major. So I don't feel like I was butchered or anything like that. So let's rewind a bit. So I told you that after surgery, you have to do the liquid diet or whatever. And so my surgeon actually gave me the okay to kind of advance a little bit. So I did it for like a week and a half. And then I went to soft foods. Soft foods to me that I was comfortable with was tuna salad. And I had a lot of clam chowder. I ate a lot of soup. And then once I graduated to the modified foods diet, I find that my body does really, really well with seafood. So I do eat a lot of seafood. I got a lot of lobster in the freezer, some shrimp, some salmon, honey. Listen, my freezer is an aquarium, but my body responds really well to that. I also do eat some grilled chicken. And then one time I had turkey so i've been eating really lean cuts of meat i don't eat anything fried one time i ain't gonna lie to you though listen and before you judge me you know who to judge yeah mama so one time i just wanted to test myself and i was like i want some raisin canes if you're not familiar with that it's just a fried chicken dinner i ate one and my stomach started doing something i was like i'll never do it again so even if i have a busy day and i'm out and i have to eat fast food the only fast food i really eat 
is Chick-fil-A because they have grilled chicken nuggets. So I'll eat that. And instead of fries, I'll have chicken soup. Um, I do get a lot of protein in, and that's something that my dietitian advised me of. She was like, start off your meals eating as much protein as you can and then graduate to everything else. So I do eat a lot of meat. Um, meaning the seafood. So what I have been doing as well is taking herbal laxatives to make sure I don't get clogged up because that's a real big thing that happens in the bariatric community. You eat so much protein, protein, protein. Next thing you know, honey, the thing is clogged. The thing is packed. The thing is stuck. So I take some laxatives and get that thing on out. So that has been my eating. Um, I do eat vegetables as long as they are cooked. Um, I have had a little bit of rice, but I don't go too far because I don't want to have too many carbs in my system. But that has been what I've been eating. Hair loss. To date, I have not experienced it. And I'm praying to sweet baby Jesus that I don't. What I have been doing is I do have a particular vitamin that I take that is from, I believe the brand is ProCare. It's a bariatric vitamin, but it does have a high amount of biotin. In addition to that, I am taking a liquid hair and nail vitamin. It's by the brand Curls. I'm not gonna lie to you, it tastes disgusting, but I do feel like I'm getting some benefit from it, um, especially with it being in liquid form. So I'm continuing to take that. I also purchased some collagen. I haven't really been taking it yet, but I am gonna start. But today my hair feels great. It feels like normal. Um, and I know that normally people experience that loss around month two or three. I'm praying it doesn't happen to me, but I will keep you all updated. But to date, no hair loss. There is one thing I want to talk to y'all about. Hormonal changes. So at first, when I got home, I felt like myself. I felt normal. But what I found was as I've been home more, I've been experiencing shifts in my hormones. I thought it was just mood swings, but not, I, then I started thinking about it. This only happened after surgery. Number one is my sleep. For some reason since surgery, my sleep pattern has been completely off. Like the other day, I went to sleep at 11 p.m. I woke up at two and then I was just like, since I'm up, I might as well make a video. So then I did a video where I told y'all I went to Walgreens at 4 a.m. to go shopping. It's because I literally cannot sleep. So that's taking some getting used to. And another thing, I don't know if it's because I'm sleep deprived or if it's the hormones, but my mouth, honey. I already, listen, I'm a very vocal person. I tell you what's on my mind, I tell you the truth, not shoot it to you straight. But since surgery, my words have been a little bit harsher than usual. I ain't trying to be mean, you know, it, it's, it's something going on internally. So it's like my emotions are impacted. Like when I feel good, I feel really good. But if I am annoyed, everybody gonna know it. So my husband even told me, honey, you've been snapping at me a little bit too much. It's just like everything is just a trigger to me. So that's, that's something to get used to. I wasn't, I never had surgery, so I didn't realize that it could impact my hormones the way it does. But honey, she a little sassy now. Well, I always been sassy, but I'm a little sassier than usual. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna work on it, I, I, I'm gonna work on it. So that is all of the updates that I can think of off the top of my head that I wanted to tell you about. So now I'm going to get into the YouTube questions. Someone asks, what advice would you give someone wanting the same procedure? I would just say, know that it's not an easy out. Recovery from surgery, um, in my case, has been good, but that's not always the case for a lot of people. So just do a lot of research, research on your surgeon, research on the process that is best for you, be it lap band, bypass, the switch, do whatever, do a lot of research because this is not a decision to take lightly. Like you putting your life in somebody else's hands. So do a lot of research and don't do it until you're 100% sure on the decision. I'm in a group with some people and some of them are like, I'm really not sure that I want to do this. And I would just say, don't do it until you know this is the last, last resort for you. Do it when you're 100% confident. And if you do it and, and you have a surgeon that you're completely trusting, just know that what's supposed to happen is going to happen. It's completely normal to feel some form of anxiety while you're going through surgery, especially the day of surgery. My blood pressure was high and I don't even struggle with blood pressure, but my doctor knew it was because I was anxious. So if you are nervous about it, just know it's completely normal um, and just trust the process. That's all I can say. Research, don't do it until you're sure. And once you have made the decision and you're sure about it, trust the process. The next question was, do you feel like your support system is consistent? Your YouTube subjects don't count. Hey, city gang. Um, how soon after? Oh, she got a few questions. Okay. So the first question, do you feel like your support system is consistent? Yes. Um, my family have been very helpful to me. My husband has been amazing. He, he wasn't on board with the decision at first, but 
he loves and respects me. And so he has been very helpful. Honey, one time he has given me a bath after we left the hospital. It, it's been that deep. So I can say that I have been very blessed to everybody in my inner circle has been 100% completely consistently supportive of me and i appreciate it her next question was how soon after do you and your significant other plan on um baby planning uh, i think that i want to wait like a year just to make sure my body is completely healed um that i've accomplished some goals that i want to accomplish especially because i know pregnancy may lead to weight gain so i want to get small like i have a goal in mind which is around maybe 175 pounds but i want to get smaller than that so that when i do gain a little bit of weight in pregnancy i will end up around 175 you understand so um i want to give myself a year to really rest recover enjoy my new body and then pop out a baby how soon could you return to working out and how long did you need bed rest? So my doctor wants you walking instantly, um, but he wants you to take, I think three to four weeks before working out, but that's just simple cardio. And I believe uh, it's supposed to be at least six weeks before you even try to lift anything. I'm not there yet, so I'm just going to wait and see what my body says. Right now, I'm completely comfortable with walking, especially an intense type walk. But as far as lifting, I'm not ready for that yet. Bed rest, honey, when my surgeon told me I would be back to normal within three days, that's exactly what happened. I had surgery on Monday. By Thursday, I was functioning pretty well with the exception of feeling, too, of feeling a little sore if I reached or getting up and sitting down just because that's using my ab muscles. But other than that, I felt completely normal within three days and I was back at work on Monday. What was your pain level when you got home? Because I had a pain pump in me um, that was going directly into my stomach, I didn't have any pain with the exception of muscle soreness. Um, but other than that, as far as like being in excruciating pain, I'm blessed to say I never experienced that. What foods or snacks have you disowned? Beef, fried foods, and sweets. Out of here. With having a procedure, has it affected your sleep position? So the first uh, week and a half that I was home, I slept on a chase lounge. I sit, slept upward because getting up and sitting down hurt, but laying down was even more intense. So I wanted to sleep upward, but now I'm back to sleeping completely normal. Um, I will say once I started sleeping back in the bed, I could not sleep on my stomach at first. Um, now I can and not feel uncomfortable, but I just don't like to. Um, I sleep on my back now, but it, the only time I really, really was affected was like the first week and a half I slept sitting down. Is it hard to fight cravings and temptations? No, and I'm gonna tell you why. Because I paid for this surgery out of pocket, and I don't want that money to have gone to waste. So nah, I ain't put nothing in my body that's gonna mess up all that money I spent. Honey, she spent some good coin. And I'm blessed to be able to say I did it, but the fact of the matter is I paid for that thing in cash and I ain't gonna waste my coins. So no, nah, it ain't hard to fight. Can you tell us the price range without insurance? Most places in America are gonna charge around 11,000 for the sleeve procedure. I do know that a lot of people that don't use insurance do go to Mexico and you can get it for around 3400 but I, I wasn't comfortable doing that, so I did do it in Missouri, and it was 11000 What's the worst part about the whole thing? Social activities. So if I'm with family, with friends, right now with us dealing with Rona, I ain't really going out no way, but when I am with them and I see them enjoying foods and stuff, and then I have to kind of curb what I'm doing to make sure that I don't get sick. Sometimes I feel like I'm missing out, but at the same time, I'm like, honey, you done had all the macaroni you ever need. You done had all the candy you ever need. You ain't missing out. You you gaining something better in the future, but for, for the moment, it does kind of stain. Especially like me and my husband went out of town. He was able to enjoy some things. I'm just like, ooh, I wish I, wish I could eat with him. Cause that, that used to be a thing, honey, but I can't do it no more. So just adjusting in social situations, that can be difficult. But other than that, my mind is focused on the prize. I ain't tripping off nothing else. How is your energy level lower than usual? Only because I'm not getting in as much um, and I'm not drinking as much. Even though I can hit my goals for the day as far as eating and drinking, it takes a long time so I have to space it out. So if I'm doing a lot of physical activity in a day, it, it can be very draining. Um, do you feel tired or do you just have more energy now? I'm tired a lot more. Um, especially because I'm not sleeping as well. So I'm not eating a whole lot at one time. I'm eating a lot less than I used to, and I'm not getting a lot of sleep. So my energy is a little lower than usual. I will admit that, but I do drink a lot of Gatorade zero to try to help me replenish my electrolytes. I drink a lot of water, but yeah, my energy is a little low. 
Have you bought a super cute outfit for your new weight? No, I bought some clothes for when we went out of town on vacation. I have stuff I didn't even get to wear, but I do have some things in mind. We're doing a photo shoot um, in a few months from now. So that's giving me some ideas of what I want to do and how I want to showcase the new body. But yeah, I haven't bought anything yet. Are you back to you? I honestly am, like completely. My energy is a little lower, especially when I do YouTube because at the end of the day, YouTube is entertainment, so you gotta kind of pep it up a little bit. Uh, it's a little harder than usual now to tap into my into extraness, but I do the best I can. So overall, I do feel back to myself just a little tired. What was your first nine scale victory? Being able to see more of the facial structure that I actually have versus feeling like, you know, real marshmallow or real, real swollen face see this that was god telling me to shut up hold on what do you do to substitute for cravings for things that you can't that you want that you can't have so when i want something sweet i do a eat an outshine popsicle that says no sugar added um i have had some sugar-free candy but you gotta be real careful with that because it got the sugar alcohols and them things to send you to the toilet um but that's been pretty much it as far as anything else um like chips i do like that but i do eat some foods with saltine crackers so that kind of satisfies the crunchy uh and saltine crackers are something that my surgeon approved of so other than that I will say I don't have too many cravings and that may be because I'm still new to the process but I haven't had too many cravings. I've been more so focusing on make sure I don't eat nothing that's going to make me throw up because I don't like to vomit. So that, that's more so been my mindset. Did you cheat on your liquid diet? Yep, I absolutely did. Yep, 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 yep. My pre-op diet. I would do the best I could and then next thing you know something about that 7 or 8 p.m. all of a sudden I want some raisin canes, I, I want some Chick-fil-A, I, I want something real fried, real sweet, give me some ice cream. Um, so I did slip up a lot but I will say the last 72 hours before surgery I ain't cheated off because I feel like okay you didn't play it a little bit too much and so those three days I took it very very seriously. I took the whole thing seriously. But if I slipped up, I didn't beat myself up too much. But those last 72 hours, I ain't mess around at all because I'm like, I ain't gonna get on that table. And then my liver so swollen. So by the time I did go to surgery, um, I had lost nine pounds in the 10 days um, on the liquid phase. And the last question, now that you've gone through the procedure and are starting your new journey, are you happy that you made the decision? I'm 100% happy that I made this decision. I feel like I did something for me that I worked really hard to accomplish it, especially having to pay for it. I feel like I'm loving the new discipline that I have. Um, I'm loving feeling like instead of um, food being a deciding factor or a driving force in things that I do, that now I truly am eating just to live. Like literally my mindset when I'm eating now is I need to get my protein so that I don't fall, have my hair falling out and that I do have some energy. I do need to get healthy fats, something that's not gonna make me throw up. Like I'm really in tune with what I put in my body now and that makes me so glad. There was a time where I would eat all three meals a day, fast food. Now I'm taking my time to plan and just make sure I'm doing good things to nourish myself. And so having that sense of discipline now that this surgery is forcing me to have has really, 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 really made me really proud. So yeah, I don't regret a single thing. So that's the last question. And I will come back to you all in one month with my two month update and let you know how life been treating you, girl. So uh, I love you, you love me, we a happy family. And I'm out of here, bye honey.